how well Liam knew Christmas wasn't temporary. Nightmares and daytime memories occurred no matter what day the calendar read. Zoe had given him something to think about. He used to read the Bible verses she referred to. He once had a cheery outlook on life. He couldn't help how he felt. Every year Christmas rolled around, he relived what had happened to his mother. Then he'd lose himself recalling the lost months of his life that followed her death. Zoe headed for the door, where she picked up her bag. I may have inherited more money than I know what to do with, but I could tell you about my bad choices, which resulted in careless living. The Lord showed me my dark side. Through Him, I've chosen to dwell on the light He brought into a dark world. I see Him in the bright world that He's provided. I'm trying to pass on some of His light. Here's your card for today. She pulled a silver envelope from the pocket of her bag, a multicolored quilted thing, and left. He followed to latch the door, but she strode back. Her smile stabbed him where he'd crossed his heart earlier. It's snowing, Liam. When was the last time you examined an individual snowflake? No two snowflakes are alike. God creates no identical humans either. He made us in his own likeness. She waved and ran. Her booted feet thumped against the sudden deluge of icy crystals. He shot the bolt and rested his seat sideways on the window shelf, swinging the leg that didn't rest on the floor. If anyone on God's snowy earth could melt the granite of his heart, he supposed it was Zoe Danner. Liam studied the envelope in his hand. He ran a finger over his name scrawled in glittery red. He turned over the thick envelope and tore the paper around the seal, trying not to disturb the glob of he knew not what. Somehow she'd fashioned a Z design in a drop of blue on top of a gold ribbon that sealed the point of the flap. As with the Christmas tree card, the Bible verse was written in cursive on a sheet of detached parchment paper. Inside, he drew out nine snowflakes intricately cut in alternating gold and silver paper on a backdrop of green and red foil. Zoe and her favorite number nine. He'd shaken his head at her and Meredith all those years ago. Three cards given away on three Saturdays. Their unselfishness had made him proud, though he never would have admitted it back then. They were just a couple of girls. He hardly recognized the smile his mouth formed. That simple action of curving his lips up instead of down relaxed the tension he'd always felt in his face. He couldn't remember the last time he'd done that. His life had turned into nothing but a serious ride. If he looked at the calendar, he surmised Zoe to be counting down to Christmas. Taking a guess, that meant seven more cards. She'd have a reason to search him out for seven more days. Then what? I suppose next she'll expect me to do something for her, such as hand out blankets to derelicts. He stood and planted his weight on both feet. Could be Zoe had a point. Maybe his life needed uplifting, the missing element in his photos. He glanced out the window. Huge snowflakes had replaced the tiny icy stuff of a few moments earlier. Was it time to catch more shots with feeling? Could his heart be thawing like the snow melting down the pane? All thanks to one feisty, full-of-life woman who gave away her heart on a daily basis he couldn't help but conclude she'd offered him a piece of her heart. No way could it work. One of them was bound to get hurt.